Hey yo, what up? This is just Joseph from Sheepfold Music, and you're listening to the 520 Podcast. My new song, Everybody Eats, is out now. Also, my boy Profet got a song called Fight available on all streaming platforms. Next week, I'll be dropping another single featuring Honesty called Rock in a Hard Place. On July 26th, my album Valley Joe will be available for download everywhere. Make sure you check that joint out. The summer is mine. It's just Sheepfold. Shout out to my boys Eric and Nate on the 520 Podcast, where music meets ministry and the indie artist takes the center stage. No food in my belly, dog. The cooler is empty. I'm trying to move with my family, dog. I heard they got plenty. Or should I move in with Jenny? Bro, I heard she get bennies. And them food stamps sound good to a brother that's skinny. I ain't... Let's go here, bro. Let's go here, bro. 520 Collective, where music meets ministry. And the indie artist takes center stage. Take a ride through my old town, old me, old Sean. Might need boats, cry oceans. Here, float down my old child. Feel so broke, no hope around here. Been trying to cope since like old one. Better slow down for your coastline. You might owe Sean. All right, what's good, fam? And welcome to the July episode of the 520 Collective Podcast, where music meets ministry and the indie artist takes center stage. We are in the field on the Track Stars Podcasting Network. I am Eric Boston, and joining me this month via the Track Stars Podcasting Network phone line, filling in for Nate Shelton. It's the homie. It's Mister You Mad himself, Jose. How you doing, sir? So you right. I'm all good, man. How's it going, man? How's it going, man? You know, we're we're rolling. Uh, obviously, we had to make some adjustments, man. But but here we are, and and I'm excited to be on on the podcast with you, bro. Hey, man. You know, man. When uh. I figure, you know, you and Nate or like the Kyrie and and uh, LeBron of the game, but sometimes you got to tag in your uh, James Jones. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Might not be good more for one day, but, hey, you know, you got the James Jones in to hit one clutch shot to give uh, Kyrie a rest and get back in there. So, hey, I'm excited and ready to do my part. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, this episode of the 520 Collective Podcast is being brought to you by Show Me Christ Records. They are located in St. Louis, Missouri, and their artist Jude is going to be rocking Evansville, Indiana this month. So if you're up in the Evansville area, make sure you come out on July 20th. The show is going to be at Club His Hop, which is located at 818 Bokey Road. That begins at 7 p.m. Guys, there is free admission to this show so make sure you go out and you support our good friends over at show me christ records uh for more information on this event and others that they are involved with you can hit up show me slash events and make sure you stream jude's single major way on your favorite digital platform now so Jose, like i said i know we had to kind of pull you in here uh last minute but we're glad you're able to join us on the podcast bro while nate's fulfilling some uh, family obligations, uh, you know, definitely excited to, to, you know, be knocking out this podcast with you, bro. Uh, I know you've had a busy 2019 to this point. Uh, what's been going on with you? Ah, man, it's just been a, you know, it's, it's been a lot of, uh, trying, trying to do where God is leading me to go. Uh, I, I wanted to really be consistent this year, try to put out maybe one or two songs a month so I, I could kind of, you know, stay visible, but at the same time, not just be putting out music just to be putting it out. Uh, I've been also blessed to be a part of the track stars live recording. Uh, of course, I've been featured on the 520 a couple of times. Even had a, a couple of the uh, songs uh, special premiere, and, and really just been trying to just grind it out, man. Trying to show people that you know good music can still hopefully make it good music, and that you know lyrics and good music still have a place in this game. For sure, man, for sure. Well, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's happened over the last month, you know, since the, the June uh, podcast, man. Uh, a, you know, a lot of guys in the 520 group me chat that dropped music, uh, including yourself, you dropped the, the conversation, your newest single. Uh, how, how's that one doing, man? It, it's doing good. It's actually uh, one of my better performing singles on Apple anyway. Uh, but again, you know, I guess when you give people that, that deep, in depth look into your life, people connect with it more. So yeah, I'm I'm super excited to see how it pushes out for the rest of the month. Yeah, man. Yeah, and and you know I'm, I'm excited for that single. Um, you know, 
a lot, of, like I said, a lot of music dropped by guys like like Mitch Durrell, uh, Intellect, just Joseph's getting ready to, you know, he said he's going to own the summer, so he's getting ready to drop a bunch of stuff. Uh, TC dropped his project. Trutha just dropped his project, Lowercase. Uh, we had D. Reed, Coop. I mean, just, it seems like one after another, man, you know, for, for guys that's in that group me chat. Um, and, and I want you to just kind of speak on this for a second because you know it from an artist's perspective on this, man. Like, I feel like if if you're an artist listening to the 520 Collective Podcast, if you have a platform or just if you're connected with CHH in any way and you're looking to, you know, build relationships with other artists, uh, with, with other people within the culture, you know, jumping into something like the 520 Collective group me chat is a good way to do that. Definitely, man. And, and what happens is, because a lot of times, when you, especially when you do features, it feels like business. Like, hey, I'm going to send you a beat, you send me the verse back, and then we'll promote. You know, but, but being a part of that group me chat, man, it really makes you feel like you're friends and your family and you're, you know, you're building a brotherhood. So when you do music together, it doesn't even feel like work anymore. It just feels like, you know, let's have fun, let's press record and see what we can make. And, and a lot of times, it makes your job easier, whether you're the the artist looking to get the feature or you're that feature, you know, because you want to give you want to give your best, but at the same time, you feel like you know what, I I know that this person gonna bring it on the other end. So man, like being a part of that group chat, man, and then seeing guys uh, kind of post music early, you get to see guys like really set that standard and push each other in a friendly competition. Man, I mean, like, you can't beat that. So, yeah, I mean, I would encourage anybody, if you're looking to get in, um, if you're looking to get, I guess, more acquainted with other artists, that would be one of the best places to be. And then there are also other platform owners inside of there as well that, you know, are definitely helping and looking for artists to push. So that 520 group chat has been like a godsend for me. That's what's up. That's what's up. If you guys are interested in that uh, group me chat, go to www.520collective.com. Right there in the main menu, you will see group me. Just click on that, and it'll give you all the information on how to get in contact with us and get plugged in, become a part of that group me chat. Um, you know, Jose, one thing we got coming up here in the next couple of weeks that I'm really excited about is we're going to be dropping that Lion's Den single, hopefully by the end of the month, maybe the beginning of August. And, of course, that goes back to our last challenge back in May, the Lion's Den challenge. Um, our, our dude, Little Red, was able to kind of take home the top spot in that challenge. And so now we've got uh, a single with him and several of the 520 brethren on that uh, Lion's Den that's going to be coming out, man. I'm excited about it. Super excited about that. And also, man, special shout out to Offline PK for, for just bringing the hammer to the beat, man. Like you, when you hear it, whenever, for those who didn't get a chance to be a part of the challenge, when you hear it, I don't know, man, it's got like that West Coast feel to it, but you feel like, oh, yeah, you just know whoever rapping is about to kill it. And then special shout out to the person whose name I won't call, Eric Boston, who wrote that hook that's just going to make you feel like, yeah, this is it. Like this. This may be a classic, and I'm not just saying it because my brothers are a part of it. I'm saying it because when you hear it from from beat to lyrics to the hook to concept to everything, you're going to be like, this is one of the best songs of 2019 easily, hands down. Well, man, I mean, you know, we, we'll see how it comes out. We'll see how it's received. I know it's been a fun process, and, and um, you know, without giving too much away, just know that uh, the process is not over with that yet. So, man, before we jump into the, the heart of the podcast there, Jose, why don't you tell the people listening, you know, where can they follow you, where they where can they connect with you on social media or, or wherever? So, of course, man, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the same name. I am Jose, spelled out uh, I-A-M-O-S-A-Z-E, or at I am Jose, again, that's I-A-M-O-S-A-Z-E. Also on all streaming platforms, straight across, just regular Oze, O-S-A-Z-E. So, yeah, make sure, man, you follow me, hit me up, DM me, let me know. Man, I love to run my mouth and talk more than just music. So, anybody that's just looking for, you know, a conversation, man, I'm always available. That's what's up, guys. And you can, uh, if you want to hit me up, uh, man, I, I kind of live on Twitter, uh, so you can... 
find me at Eric Boston three. That is at Eric Boston and the number three. Uh, so yeah, hit me up, man. Uh, make sure you follow 520 Collective as well. That is at 520CHH on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we've got the the YouTube channel that we've got up and going now. Uh, so check it out. Got some uh, some friends of, of the platform that ha- have given us their visuals that we've posted up. We've also got a pretty cool uh, video submissions playlist that you can check out and follow on there as well guys so we're kind of all over the place make sure you hit us up and of course you know everything lives at 520 collective.com you can get links to all that great uh all those other great platforms that we dabble in as well so Jose, as you know man what we do here on the show each and every month is we pick a song that we uh feature here on the podcast we listen to it and then we give a little critique you know what do we like about it what was maybe some uh, potential for opportunity areas uh, for the artists with that song, you know, just, just our overall thoughts on that particular track. And I'm not going to lie to you, man. I'm really excited about, you know, what we're getting to listen to this month uh, for a very special reason, man. I'm, I'm kind of itching to check it out. Are, are you ready to roll with me? Definitely. Definitely, man. Let's hit that play button and let's get to it. All right, man, we're going to get into it. This is the debut, guys, the debut of the song Splash by Corey Wordsmith. Uh, song officially drops July 17th, so if you're liking what you hear, I want you to make sure you go out, you buy it, you stream it, you support it any way you can. But right now, we're going to take a listen to it. It's for the very first time here on the 520 Collective Podcast, Corey Wordsmith's new single, Splash. I guess players just want to make a splash Cause ain't nobody trying to finish last I guess players just want to make a splash Cause ain't nobody trying to finish last Guess ain't nobody trying to finish last Man, players just want to make a splash It's cutthroat on the way to the top Cause ain't nobody trying to finish last Might take what you need if they want what you got Guess players just want to make a splash It's cutthroat on the way to the top Ain't nobody trying to finish last Guess ain't nobody trying to finish last Glory to God, I put him ahead If that mean I'm last, I what I say That mean I'm last, I still what I say Glory to God, I put him ahead. If I finish last, I finish ahead. Glory to God, I put him ahead. If that means I'm last, it's still what I say. I like real songs with a lot of substance. And authenticity, I'ma be feeling it if you for real and spit something that show me you got some ability. I ain't saying I'm the greatest in none. I ain't degrading you, brother. But if I was grading you, brother, you'd probably be flunking. I probably have something to say to your mother. I grew up on Biggie and Shady and Jay-Z. The rapping was always amazing. And it made me want to snap in a manner that I have where you actors in the background complaining. Real spitters still get the respect, but I wish that it still meant to check. Cause the game has been infiltrated, and I hate it cause it's all been made into a mess. Let's go back to a time where you had to rhyme in a way that was kind of impressive. And instead of just flexing, you talked about life and the things that you learned is a lesson that's a blessing to be able to rip it and not just a gimmicky style we would spend hours in the car riding round man throwing down our freestyles there was fun days had no money days but we still was rapping like we rich who would have thought we would learn about god and make songs in a way that would try to uplift that was legit we would go in no exaggeration when i say that we sick and if you can spit but no message is this and you might as well quit and just listen to this <laughs> I guess players just want to make a splash Cause ain't nobody trying to finish last I guess players just want to make a splash Cause ain't nobody trying to finish last Guess ain't nobody trying to finish last Man, players just want to make a splash It's cutthroat on the way to the top Cause ain't nobody trying to finish last Might take what you need if they want what you got Guess players just want to make a splash It's cutthroat on the way to the top Ain't nobody trying to finish last Guess ain't nobody trying to finish last Glory to God, I put them ahead If that mean I'm last, that's still what I say That mean I'm last, that's still what I say Glory to God, I put them ahead If I finish last, I finish ahead Glory to God, I put them ahead If that mean I'm last, it's still what I say (laughs) 
All right, guys, that was Splash by Corey Wordsmith. Like I said, that is the debut of that song that drops on July 17th. Make sure you pre-save it, pre-order, whatever you can on it. Um, man, Jose, I'm I'm just itching to jump into this and, and hear your thoughts, man. Uh, obviously, being an artist, you probably view this a little bit different than Nate or myself. So I think we're going to have a, you know, a fun time kind of digging into what you are looking at whenever you're critiquing a song. Uh, before we jump into the actual critique, I want to just make sure we hit on the five categories that we talk about each and every month. That would be the writing, the hook, uh, the flow, production, and the mix and master on the song. So why don't we start right at the beginning, man? You know, I feel like you know it doesn't matter what you do with the rest of it on song. If, if the writing's not solid, what did you think about the writing here on Splash? So, so yeah, man. So the writing wise, man, I felt like like it was, it was a one. I mean, he he really put that pen to work. He and he gave us he gave a message that I feel like so many artists want to touch on. As far as just okay, you know, everybody putting out music, but you're not really talking about nothing, and we kind of tired of hearing it. So I'm gonna give you real substance, and I'm gonna call you out on it. So writing wise, man. I love it. I, I I have nothing bad to say about. It. Yeah, man. I, you know, for me, I, I really like what Corey is saying here in the song. You know, he's talking about rapping, rapping, right? I mean, you see a lot of people throwing that kind of phrase around uh, here lately, uh, and that's what he's really talking about. Uh, if I'm going to be honest, man, I wish there had been at least one more verse because uh, I think there was more for Corey to build on when it comes to this topic. You know, I think writing you know his writing was focused throughout um so it would have been fun to you know be able to hear him really develop the theme a little bit more in a second verse you know i think i think that could have pushed the song you know over that line from being okay to being good uh i mean what do you what do you think am i off base there well well, i I definitely agree on that uh uh, but a lot of times i don't know it feels like now the new the new generation has gotten, I, I guess, the shorter, the better. Like, they don't want to give you too much. They want to give you just enough so you want more. So whether I, you know, whether I agree or not, I understand it. But I definitely would have liked to see more because it was a topic that I feel like uh, you you want to hear. You know, because you, you want to hear other artists say, hey, man, listen, you guys are out here getting famous talking about this. So I, I love, and I also love the fact that he stayed on the topic. You know, a lot of times you'll see artists where the first verse will be really direct, and then the second verse will just be a bunch of throw together bars. So I'm glad that he he did stay on topic uh, as, as long as he did. But yeah, I would have definitely liked to hear more of it as well. Yeah, man. I mean, and this is kind of off, but it's, it's tied in there with what we're talking about. You know, when we were coming up, it was like, you know, if uh, each song had at least three verses, right? And now, kind of the the expectation is more like two. Um, you know, and then here you've got a song that really just has one verse. Um, and what's surprising about it is that it's still over three minutes long. You know, um, so I, I don't know. It, it's different, man. It, it's different. Now, I don't. I don't know if it ties into the writing. Or if that would be because the way he kind of brought it in, it was it was kind of long and drawn out at the beginning where he had like the, the echo effect and it kind of like it didn't really build up the anticipation of the song. So I think a lot, I think a couple of people may have probably hit the skip button because it took so long to get into it. So that can be, uh, you know, I've seen and I've also heard others say that that can be like a downfall where you take too long to get into it. So if, you know, as far as the writing, why if, I don't know if that will be considered as far as the writing aspect, but if it is, then yeah, that, that may be the, the the only downside as far as the writing. It, it kind of took him a while to get into it, you know? Okay, for sure, for sure. Well, let's let's talk about, uh, you know, like I say, he's got the one true verse. Let's talk about his flow here. Um, you know, for me, I thought Corey's flow was solid. Um, I think that you could hear him you know, being able to try out some different ideas, you know, as far as like his pattern, cadence, you know, whatever. Um, It'll be interesting to see how he develops 
moving forward and, and what he does with uh you know those different aspects of the flow um you know i think we didn't hear much of him trying out different stuff on splash and it may be because it was limited to one verse but i think one thing that i really like about Corey is his tone and, and the control of his voice um you know he stays consistent and i felt like he matched the beat well uh what were your thoughts on on Corey's flow here on splash well, I, I like the flow of this. Uh, it, it, it felt like it fit the beat perfect. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear artists where it feel like they went into the song with a, speci- a specific flow in mind and a cadence, and then they just found the beat and tried to force it. It felt real organic with, with the way he put that together. And it, and it didn't, it felt like, you know, he didn't want to go too fast to where you miss what he was saying. But he didn't want to go so slow that it was just boring. And he changed it up. He changed it up a few times, but he still made sure that he could get every point across. So you know, I was okay with the flow and the cadence. Uh, I wouldn't say blown away, but I'm I'm glad that he did stick with it because had he sped up too much, you may have lost some of the writing point as far as not being under, uh, able to understand a lot of what he was trying to convey. So I think he I think he had a really good mixture. Uh, as far as his writing tying into his cadence and his flow. Okay, and, and what and what he put down here on this song, Jose, um, can you hear it in him? Like the the like, I always try to look for potential, especially when we're talking about independent artists, right? I mean, can you hear that potential in Corey uh, for him to be able to, you know, try out those different cadences? Um, you know, being able to you know, just mess with his pattern a little bit more. I, I think that he's got it in him. I, I definitely can hear that. I think, and, and this is my first time hearing it, so it's definitely going to be, he's going to be somebody that I check out more. But you can tell that he he's confident in himself and he knows how to rap. Some guys rap, but and they, they kind of, you can tell they're kind of feeling around in the dark. But you can tell, like, he knows what he's doing and, and he made sure this is what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to do it. And it didn't feel like an experimental process. It felt like artwork, if, if that makes sense. For sure, for sure. All right, man. So uh, if you're good there, man, let's jump on to the next uh, the next category here. Uh, anything else that you want to say on flow before we move on? Uh, he was good with it. I'm, I'm good with that part. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, man, one thing that, that you've proven that you know – uh, what you're doing when it comes to this aspect of a song is, is putting together a hook, man. Uh, you know, you you dropped several, you know, Amen, You Mad. I mean, you, you got these catchy hooks on your tracks. What what'd you think of the hook here on Splash? The hook didn't catch me, uh, and and I don't know if I don't know if his intention was to kind of make it to where you focus more on the verses. But the hook just was kind of, you know, this is where the hook goes. So I, I, I better put something here. I, I don't want to make it sound like it was bad. It just didn't. It A lot of times I feel like your hook should help enhance the song. To me, it felt like the hook didn't, it didn't add, but it didn't take away either. It was just kind of there. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's simple, you know, uh, it's that, you know, players just want to make a splash because ain't no one trying to finish last. You know, I, I think it's simple, but it's it's a you know the, the the wording on it is one that it's easy to kind of keep in your head though. You know, um, I, I'm with you, man. I mean, it wasn't over the top. It wasn't uh, one of those ooh ooh let this uh, let this be uh, playing in my head whenever I'm not even trying to think about it type of situations, but. Um, I think it worked with the song okay. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I mean, I say simple. That, that That's what kept coming to my mind. It's like, okay, this is this is simple, but not necessarily that it's bad. Yeah, either. and simple is not always a bad thing because some of our favorite songs are those simple ones that we can cut, that, that stick in your head. So. You know, I don't want I don't want people to hear it and be like they they make it they may think that simple means whack or it just wasn't good. It's you know 
simple is not always bad. So, you know, don't don't be afraid to go simple sometimes. I think but in, in this instance, just for this specific song, I would have liked a little more. I guess that, that would be the easiest way of saying it. Okay, okay. For sure, for sure. Um, production. Production. You know, obviously, you know, from the artist standpoint, the, the starting spot is the writing for kind of maybe putting the song together as a whole, that starting point could be the production, right? Um, what, what did you feel on the production here with uh splash? The production didn't grab me at all. Uh, this is one of the few times that I felt like the lyrics kept me versus, uh, the beat came on and I wanted to hear more. The beat came on and I was kind of like, huh? Like, is this, you know, is, is something else going to happen? And then he started rapping, and I was like, okay, well, I see why he chose this beat. But uh, I, I, I really, produ- production to me was probably the the lowest of, of everything that he did. Uh, it, it was it was my least favorite of all the, the grading topics. So, I mean, not a bad beat, just it just felt kind of, uh, okay. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a pretty straightforward production. Um, you know, I, I I can agree with you. I would have liked to hear it change up just a bit more. Uh, I did like the sample, though. I did like the sample in it. Um, and, you know, whenever I was really listening to it, you know, throwing the good headphones on and whatnot, you know, I, I like that the low end, you know, sounded good without being overpowering. So that that was a good thing. I mean, obviously that kind of goes into the mix and master, you know, our, our final category that we'll be hitting on. But you know, I think it started with a good level in the uh, the overall production. Uh, but yeah, o- overall not the most amazing beat that I've heard. But I think it still did a good job of working with the writing for this song that Corey put together. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. I think that, you know, I think because of the way that he approached it, it made the beat, it, it fit, everything fit together. But I, I, I guess if, if I was sitting down and one, of, and one of the producers came in and was like, hey, I got a beat for you, and that beat came on, I probably would have been like, uh, let's go to the next one. If I, if I just took the words out and just strictly listened to the beat, I probably would have been like, eh, let's, let's get another one. But like you said, that once he put it all together, it worked perfect. Yeah. So, and, and obviously, this might be something that we want to hit on once we completely wrapped up. But you know what? It's our show, so we can do whatever we want. I guess. Um, do, I want to ask you this, man, because this is something I've heard before. Is like, there's these certain songs, the, the sound, you know, the production, whatever the aspect of it you want to uh, take into account here, but. You have songs that are singles, and then you hear have songs that are yeah, that's an album track, right? Um, I mean, so if I'm if I'm kind of interpreting what you're saying right, Jose, is that maybe this is more like a track for an album, maybe not the strongest of singles. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if because when I look at it, I guess you have like songs that you can hear in the club and on the radio, and then you have songs that fill up your album but they're still really good songs this was a great album cut but if I, I could like if this song came on the radio or if I was you know out somewhere with friends and it came on I wouldn't it wouldn't catch me you know I wouldn't pay it I wouldn't I wouldn't feel like you know hey DJ bring that back but again like I say that I, you know because I don't want it to sound like we're saying hey the song is a bad song it's a good album song but yeah, I don't. I don't think it. I don't think it would be like a single that would just take off. Okay. Okay. Well, so the final category, man, is the mix and the master. Obviously, you know that kind of finishing touch, that that little bit of polish there at the end. Um, you know, for me, I felt like the levels on Corey's main vocals, like like during his verse, I felt like it was it was pretty okay. You know, it wasn't like um, there wasn't anything real like negative in there you know it wasn't like oh i wish it would have been bumped up a little bit more you know during his verse or it didn't feel like it was too much i think it was it was okay it was maybe not right in the sweet spot right in the pocket but it was it was pretty close um what did you think as far as the the verses go or or the verse went yeah i think i think the the mixing was okay uh 
I, I actually played it through my um, headphones, and then I played it in the car, and I turned it up really loud. And I guess uh, once I put it in the car, it kind of got a little distorted, but it wasn't. It didn't just make it. It didn't make me feel like oh, this was poor mixing and mastering. But I always just do that to kind of to kind of get a feel of, of you know. Uh, was this just a really good mix or did it have a really good mix and good match? So I, I kind of agree with where you're going with it. It, it was, you know, it was, it was okay. Um, but it, and I, I think, I definitely think that, uh, there are, there are some engineers that could have, could have took it to another level, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and I feel like on the, I mean, I guess you'd call it maybe the ad libs, you know, that where he's like, you know, especially there at the beginning, he's like, you know, glory to God, you know, I put him ahead. Um, I wasn't a big fan of how they were, for one, they were mostly panned to the left, and then they kind of swept every once in a while uh, from from side to side. Um, I also felt like the effect, uh, you know, maybe is that, that echo that you mentioned earlier, it kind of made them sound a little like too uh, tin can-ish to me. Um you know, I, I get why the volume might have been a little bit lower on on those parts, on those kind of ad lib uh, sections, but I definitely think there's room to punch them some more and still get the same impact out of it. Like I think they they had more ceiling to it. Uh, what'd you think on? Because uh, I mean, th- this is like those were like a a main component of this track. What'd you think of kind of the the mix in those areas? I I kind of feel the same way you felt, and I could kind of hear that panning in the beginning. And at first, I was like, "Well, maybe that maybe that's my headphones." But once I played it in the car, I still kind of heard it the same way. Uh, but again, that's that's one of those things. It, it kind of felt like that may have been more on uh, the artist saying, "Hey, I want you to do it this way," versus the engineer saying, "Hey, I'm going to do it this way." Uh, so you know, I, I kind of feel like you know, yeah, it, it was a risk that was taken. So, so what and, you're and, saying is that that might be like a, a calculated um, approach there. Yeah, Cause it, because because I've done that. I've done that before with my music, where uh, I would tell I would tell the engineer like, "Hey, on this part, uh, put a rever- like cut the beat, put a reverse on it, and then it 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 didn't turn out the way that it did in my head." But it was kind of too late because I was like, okay, you know what? I don't feel like waiting on it. Let's just keep it and hope that people hear what I was going for. So I, I definitely know that artists have have done that in the past, including myself. And I kind of felt like that that was kind of what he did because it kind of just seemed like I want this effect. Can you give me this type of effect on it? Put you know in the beginning and then the engineer, if there was a different engineer, kind of like yeah yeah, kind of like this and like yeah yeah, just like that. Okay. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, as, as we move into kind of like the overall feel of the song here, you know, our overall kind of final thoughts, um, you know, I, I think what I'm walking away from this song with is that Corey has the ability in him to take his music and push it further. He's just not there yet. Uh, but I think you're catching glimpses that show you that it's coming. <laughs> like, you know, it's not like, oh, well, this he, he's already kind of tapping out his potential i i I think there's a lot because like you said you know like the way that he puts a flow together you can tell the confidence there you can tell he understands what he's doing i think whether it's uh repetition or just experience or, or whatever i think there's more on the way from him uh that we're just not getting yet yeah i think to me it's again because this is the only sample that i have to judge by it sounds like uh to me Corey maybe listened to a lot of 90s early 2000 hip-hop like the the new york rappers the jay-z's and nazis uh even you know some would say you know fabulous and those guys like that because it sounds like he really has perfected his lyricism it really felt like he put a lot into his lyrics and then everything else is just kind of like, I'll get that in a minute. I want to make sure that I can write and give you bars. So in, in that aspect, I feel like he 
if, if you're just listening to him rap, you're going to say, oh, this guy can rap. But if you're kind of saying, you know, we want we want the total package, then I, I see where you're going and saying, you know, he, you know, delivery can be better, uh, especially uh, picking out beats. Because whether we want to admit that or not, fans want to hear hot, up tempo, catchy beats. They don't always want to hear you just spit bar after bar after bar. Sometimes you got to give them simple. And I think I don't know if he has an ear to pick that or not. Because like I said, I don't know much about him. But just based off this song, it kind of if this is kind of his style, then that I think that may end up hurting him more than helping because you don't see a lot of artists kind of reach that next level if they don't mix it up. So again, I don't want to make it sound like this is just his his style, but if it is, then he he'll, he'll have to definitely be able to mix it up a little bit. And then I think playing with your flow on different songs will also help. So I can definitely see him getting to that next level. Okay. So if you were sitting down with him and just kind of giving him feedback, uh, you know, artist to artist, um, you know, what, what would you point out as like some opportunity areas for him to kind of focus on? So uh, I think one of the biggest things is capitalizing on the moment and you don't have to make it your, your thing, but like right now, CHH fans seem to be gravitating toward that choppy flow so i would give them maybe one or two songs like that to show them that i can do it and then from there i would and then i, I would just continue to practice on my craft because it seems like he is really good at what he does as far as rapping as far as lyrics so i would continue to hone in on that but i would just try to make sure that i give you it i, I would encourage him to give you every type of song um so you know sometimes you you want to give that that music you can kind of bob to. Sometimes you want to get something that you can dance to, uh, you know, still keeping it clean. And then, of course, sometimes you want to just show, hey, but I can go bar for bar with the best stuff. So, you know, a lot of times we see a lot of artists who get stuck in one sound and what, it's like they can't get out of it. And then it only limits them to a certain a certain group of people. And if, if you can't, you know, if you're only stuck for one group of people, especially as an artist, because as an artist, you, you're making music. You hope that you can make music that can touch everybody. And I know we can't touch everybody, but at least that's the mindset that I, I try to encourage people to go into. Like, show, show you can get outside of that box and do more than just one thing, if that makes sense. For sure, for sure. Man, you know, for, from my end of it, I'm going to keep it simple. I would say one of the biggest opportunity areas that stood out to me is really on that back end in regards to, you know, like, engineering and some of the choices that were made you know i think it's stuff that's going to get sorted out as he continues really just molding and perfecting his sound too i mean i think once you find that lane and you know okay this is how i want my music to sound it become i would assume it becomes a little bit easier uh to know okay yeah this is something we need to do or maybe we need to stay away from that uh so i think that's going to happen moving forward for Corey. You know, overall on the song, Jose, you know, we, we like to give a, a score out of 10 here on the 520 Collective Podcast. I'm going to give Splash a, a 6 out of 10. I think it was it was an okay song, you know, maybe slightly above average because, like you said, that, that skill that he's got with uh, with his writing and, and the way that he can rap, you know, it, it definitely makes him – it brings him up a little bit, right? Uh, I mean, if he didn't have that, we'd be having a completely different conversation, I feel like, on this song. But, you know, that skill, that ability is there. It's just some of the other areas uh, after that that, you know, have those um, opportunities for improvement. So I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Like, how would you rank the song, man? I will give the song a 7. And and I think uh, maybe 4 or 5 of those points would come from strictly just lyrics and delivery. Because I, I... me personally, again, like I say, I'm real big, and, and for those who haven't heard my music, or if you have, you know, I, I'm real big. One, he was able to tell a story, which I love. That is, man, if you ever want to win me over, that that that's a great start. And then not only did he tell the story, but he stayed on topic with it, and he was deep with it. You know, like, he didn't just tell a simple story. He took a complex issue, and it was like he went at him. But he also explained why he went at whoever, you know, the the type of artist he was going at. So to me, that was huge. So 
uh, you know, again, just those two things alone, I, I, I would have gave him four or five points just for that. But overall, I'd give it a seven. I definitely felt like, you know, the beat could have been better. Um, production could have been, you know, slightly better, but I, I wouldn't take away much from that. But other than that, yeah, I, I, was, I, I like it. Overall, seven out of ten. All right, guys, that's what's up. That's what's up. So, uh, man, let us know what you guys think of this new song, Splash by Corey Wordsmith. You know, hit us up on social media. Like we said, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of them at 520CHH. Jump on to the uh, website, www.520collective.com, and go to the podcast page. You can actually leave comments for each podcast right there on the website. So let us know what you think. And like I said, this was the debut of Splash. It drops July 17th. So that's a couple of days after the drop of this podcast. So make sure, you know, if it's uh, if it's before the 17th and you're listening, make sure you go in and you pre-save that. If it's after the 17th, go and stream it, download it, uh, whatever you can do. Sh- you know, support these indie artists, guys. That's what this whole podcast is really about. Let's, let, you know, showing support, building up. Uh, the guys that are going to, you know, eventually take over this space, you know, that's going to lead it to, you know, wherever it's going next, guys. So we appreciate Corey Wordsmith for sending Splash into us early, allowing us to debut it on the podcast. Uh, you know, super excited to see what he does going forward. You know, um, if you haven't checked out his his stuff in the past, Ozzy, I know you said you haven't. You know, he's got a track called Faces that we've got on our working playlist. Uh, you know, go and check that out. You know, I, th- I think it shows that the ability's there and, and there's there's uh, a lot of good things on the horizon for this young artist. Uh, man, Jose, uh, so we got the uh, Industry Insider interview coming up next, man. So before we switch over to that, let me just say thank you once again for taking some time out helping us out in a pinch and filling in for Nate this month. Um, anything that you want to hit on before we head over to the, to the interview? Definitely, man. Yeah. Well, first of all, man, thank y'all for having me, man. And thank, thank you, Nate, for having something to do to give me something to do. So I appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, also, man, I, 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 if you're free Friday morning, 7 a.m., my wife and I, we do a podcast. Uh, not really a podcast, but a Facebook Live you can check it out on my page, my Facebook page, uh, fan page, at Jose. I uh, definitely encourage people to check that out. She does daily inspiration, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But, of course, being a husband, she makes me come on on Friday. So, something that we do for uh, a lot of fun. And also, man, any artist that, uh, well, one of any CHA fans listening, continue to check out the 520 website for new music. And any artist, make sure that you connect with Eric, Nate, uh, even myself, just anybody to, to help you get established on uh, with the 520 team, man, because I promise you, man, it is it is worth this weight in gold. Promise you, hands down. So, yeah, just want to plug that in. Awesome, man. Well, we appreciate that. So, guys, uh, we are going to head over to the Industry Insider interview. Uh, we've got a good one this month, man. Uh, I'm, I was excited to have my brother, Jason Bordeaux, uh, join me for a little conversation a couple of days ago and, and really excited to have him be a part of the podcast for the first time. So I hope you enjoy this month's industry insider interview. Hey guys, what's up? This is Eric with 520 collective in the 520 collective podcast. I want to talk to you about anchor. If you haven't heard about anchor, it's the easiest way possible to make a podcast. Let me break it down for you. One, it's free. That's right. No cost to use Anchor. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you. So if you want to get on platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and many, many more, then it's really, really easy, guys. You just set up an Anchor account at anchor.fm. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Again, make money, no minimum listeners. You're not going to find that anywhere else. It's everything you need to make a podcast, and it's all in one place. So go right now and download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And make sure you let them know 
You heard it on 520 Collective Podcast. Welcome to this month's Industry Insider Interview. The Bookkeeper 24-7 is the official sponsor of 520 Collective's podcast interviews, and they are currently looking to add a social media intern to their team. Are you someone that loves both Christian hip-hop and social media? Would you enjoy using these interests to impact the CHH culture for the kingdom? Gain experience now by becoming a part of one of CHH's most established platforms with an audience that is engaged. Help promote the latest going on at thebookkeeper247.com, as well as music from your favorite artist. Go to thebookkeeper247.com now to contact the guys about this amazing opportunity. Definitely want to give a shout out to the Bookkeeper247 for becoming our official industry insider interview sponsor. And joining me this month via the Trackstars Podcasting Network phone line is one of the hardest working men behind the scenes in CHH. He is the host of the Business with Bordeaux podcast, co-host of Solomon's Porch podcast, both of which are network mates of the 520 Collective here on Trackstars Podcasting Network. He also heads up the Trackstars Independent Artist Spotlight, interviewing some of CHH's most up-and-coming artists. He's also in charge of music submissions and the leak page for Trackstars. So if you're looking to get your music on one of the culture's top platforms, he is the guy you need to connect with. Above all, he is a fantastic human being, and I'm proud to call him a brother and a friend. It's the one and only Jason Bordeaux. How you doing, Jay? Yeah, that was way too much. <laughs> oh, Dude, man. I had to do it right, man, with you that coming much. on the podcast, you know? Oh, uh, man. That's cool, man. It's <laughs> interesting. I was just talking with my wife yesterday about what I do, because I have a little side project I'm doing right now that nobody knows about, okay. except for like two people. And she was asking me, she was like, I don't even know what to say to people whenever they ask what my husband does. And I said, just tell them I'm a podcaster. That, that, that'll work. <laughs> and the funny thing is like, you know, still full-time pharmacy tech, third shift. So, <laughs> Dude, yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. I but mean, I, I feel busy. I don't busy. even count that. You know, I, I feel busy and then I look at what you're doing, man, and it's like, geez, I, I don't even know how you do it, bro. I have a very, very gracious, loving wife who is supportive. If if my wife wasn't as, as cool as she is, there's no way I'd be able to do all this. No way. So all shout out to her. I mean, I got to know. Do you, well, and, do you I mean, get a obviously chance to God, sleep? So. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I try to do most of my most of my side hustle stuff. I do on my off week. I work seven on seven off. So God has blessed me with the perfect work schedule so I can do this stuff. Okay. That's what's up. So, you know, I always like to try to start off by seeing, you know, what, what's just going on in your world right now, man? Like, what what's the latest going on with uh, Jason Bordeaux? So, uh, just kind of staying in, 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 in relevant with what I love doing, um, working on some Business with Bordeaux podcast interviews here uh, pretty soon. I had one that just would not happen yesterday. Technology just would not allow it, which is one of the aggravating parts about, you know, doing these things is sometimes, you know, technology software doesn't want to cooperate. So uh, I had to reschedule that, but it's going to be a great interview with the owner of uh, Kingstone Comics. And uh, so there's that. Uh, we have, you know, every other week we do shows on Solomon Sports Podcast. So we have a show coming up. We're recording it tomorrow. We're recording it tomorrow. Uh, I mean, it, it, it'll actually be out by the time this episode airs. But we're going to have a guy who used to be atheist, who's now agnostic, who is going to be kind of doing a Q and A uh, with us about our faith. And um, we actually had, yeah, we had it, and we had we done that one time before with a, a guy who I was close friends with growing up, who's agnostic, and he told me now, you know, from watching the show, from following our platform everything he has seen come out of us, the realness that we carry on and off the mic, you know, that's not, that's not a, a self plug. It's just, you have to, you have to be the same person on and off the mic. And he told me where he considered himself 85% agnostic. He's probably more 15% agnostic. And so, you know, I was just, you know, he, you know, he, he still has questions. And, um, so he said one day he would get back on the show and kind of share the transition he's been going through, but it's just been, you know, a huge ministry platform. You know, we can disciple people and talk about comic books. I mean, what else would you want in a podcast, right? <laughs> uh, 
So, yeah, man. So that's that's pretty much what's going on. I'm, I have a side project that I'm doing right now, a little side thing. Uh, I don't have a timeline for it yet, but uh, two of my good friends know about it, and they're helping me do some stuff with it. So uh, that's that, man. That is that. All right, man. That's 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 what's up. So, uh, man, a lot of good stuff that's on uh, on the way from both of your shows. It sounds like, man, um, for people that maybe haven't checked it out before, that's like, oh man, that sounds like something I really want to hear. Where do they go? You know, what do they need to do to be able to listen to those podcasts, man? So, business with the Bordeaux podcast. Um... You can go to the website. I'll be honest, I haven't touched businesswithbordeaux.com in so long. And Bordeaux's B O R D E A U X. Uh, you know, I just mainly do the interviews. I, I do the episodes and post them up on the Track Stars Podcast Network. And it goes out to iTunes, Google Play, all those cool places. Uh, so you can check it out there. Solomon's Porch Podcast, we have a lot more going on. And uh, so you can go to Solomon's Porch Podcast dot com for that as well as you know the podcasting platforms as well and uh and so that's every other week business with bordeaux uh, i'm trying to stick to a once a month but i'll be honest it's it's much harder to do that because and as you would know eric is you have to schedule a time that works out for you and the person being interviewed and then if there's technology failure if there's software failure you can't just sit there for three, four, five hours and try to figure it out. You have to just reschedule it. And sometimes, you know, depending on how busy the person is, it takes a long time to reschedule. So um, that show has become tougher to do. But, you know, I said in the video yesterday, if you if you can't fight through the toughness that it takes to do something, you probably shouldn't be doing it. So definitely. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, we. Uh, a couple episodes ago, man, we, we experienced that firsthand, man. And I tell you what, I'm not excited about uh, the next time I have to run into that, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Anybody out there, if you want to start a podcast, go ahead and, and expect to get frustrated and aggravated and want to just give up. But it's like that with anything, though. I think anything has those moments, you know? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Well, man, let's let's talk about... Uh, some of the other stuff that you have going on as far as your role with with track stars I man I think you know for for like the people that we interact with on a regular basis here at 520 collective you know it's gonna be the stuff that they are ex you know really eager to know about so uh, let, let's talk about the independent artist spotlight for a second man uh, so just kind of explain you know what that is. Um, you know, maybe what the process is, you know, like, and how can someone that says, man, that looks like something I want to do. How, how can they connect with you and make that happen? So essentially the independent artist spotlight is a way to get an interview done of yourself. Uh, you know, usually it's around a time somebody's dropping a single or an album or something really big. They, they really want maximum exposure for and uh, Ryan Wright just started this like three years ago when he was going full time with Track Stars, and essentially, you know, you, you do pay a fee because there's uh there's third party people who who work on it as well, and so just to make sure it's kind of top notch and all that. But um, you know, it's just a way for people to get to know you because your music doesn't say everything about you, even as much as you want it to. I mean, really, a three-minute song or an hour-long project, you really can't get the deep questions out. And people want to know how real you are. Like, they don't want to just know, can he just make good music and that's it. I mean, if it was, then nobody would get mad at Lecrae's Twitter feed. Nobody would get mad about NF's, you know, Twitter feed or Andy's Twitter feed. They want to get to know the real you. So this is a way where you can have somebody who is, you know, what I, what I would say is objectively coming in asking you questions sometimes they're tough questions sometimes they're you know just easier simple questions so people get to know okay this person's really about jesus this person is working is grinding getting his music done the fact that you're investing in doing the independent artist spotlight the time and the resources lets people know he's serious about this and so it's just a good way to get some exposure let people know who you are and it goes up on the Track Stars YouTube page, so their YouTube channel, which has, I don't know, tens of thousands of subscribers at this point. 
and um, some of the videos have millions of views. Now, just to be honest, the independent artist spotlight is not going to get millions of views because your, your name is not NF. So if your name was NF or Lecrae, then yeah. But um, but we we've, we've actually had some people who who I've I've heard from saying. Man, I'm glad you're doing this. You know, I, I've heard about some of these artists, and it's just good to know they really are uh, about what they are about. And so, in the same way, whenever I hear an interview on Track Stars from an artist, I'm like, you know, now I kind of want to go buy their album because I know their heart behind it, and I want to support their music. And um, now I don't buy bad music. I'll just put that out there. If it's bad, I'm not going to buy it. So you still have to have good music, but to have an interview to compliment that is great. Definitely. Well, and I mean, the cool thing about what you do with, you know, that independent art spotlight is that you're interviewing these people uh, via Skype, right? So, uh, and you're actually recording it. So we see, you know, like you said, on the YouTube channel, you, you see a split screen, you're in one side, the, the artist is in the other. So we're able to put a face with these people, um, you know, make that you know, visual connection with what's going on there. Um, and it's definitely awesome. Uh, what What would you say... Yeah, you know, you talked about how um, maybe it's not the highest view generator that Trackstars has, uh, but there's obviously some pluses behind it. What's those pluses that um, you know the artists need to just really know? Like, hey, this is why you want to do this interview with uh, Jason Bordeaux. I would say one because once, well, I'll say in general. Once you invest in track stars, track stars invest in you back, typically. Uh, especially if your music's fire. Two, so you kind of have that connection that takes place. And I do as well. Everybody I've done the independent artist spotlight with, I've become good friends. And, you know, I, I support their music and things like that. And, and in fact, the very first person who did the independent artist spotlight with me is probably one of my closest friends in CHH at this point. And, uh, and I've never met him in person. But we text regularly. I talked with him on the phone yesterday. And so, and, and we're kind of working together on something uh, on a different project right now. But, uh, but just in general, uh, networking is good. Again, it's really like the things that you couldn't figure out how to say in a song or the things you can say in an interview. And so, that and then having somebody else pull that information out of you. Sometimes you will answer questions that you never even would have thought to write in a bio. Because a lot of times, you know, you think of the typical things to write in a bio, like who are my inspirations, you know, what did I listen to growing up, things like that. But we, we dig into your, your your personal life, as in your your personal faith in Christ, and um, but and then like I said before, uh, Track Stars shares it, so it does get a lot of traction. And the most important thing, to be honest with you, and this is true for any type of advertising or marketing campaign. People need to see your name. Like you need to have, like if you're an artist, you need to have as much out there as possible with your name tied to it. And an interview is a good thing to have. That way, if somebody is looking for you, they go to YouTube and they see, you know, music video, music video interview. Boom. I want to get to know them. The interview is what they're looking at. Like usually for me, if I hear a really good artist and I go to YouTube and I see an interview or a music video, I always click the interview first because I want to their I want to know that they're legit. I don't, you know, if they make great music, that's cool. But if somebody wants to partner in a ministry way, if somebody wants to support them and share their music, I want to know they have that they're legit behind the microphone. And um and that's kind of the really great way to do it. And, and on top of that, I mean, you know, yeah. It gets shared on all the plat, you know, the track stars platforms. It gets shared on, you know, I share it myself, and you know, Solomon's Porch will probably share it as well. And uh, but we know we have our own minimal promotion things that we do over there, so it's not necessarily tied to it. So don't don't assume that. But in general, though, you want to have as much out there as possible, and not not a lot of indie artists have interviews on. Uh, platform as big as track stars and that's not putting down any other outlet you know there's there's smaller outlets out there with you know less followers than rapzilla or track stars but it's still good to have an interview out there <laughs> right right and like i said you know it's, it's not putting anybody down because everybody's on the come up like everybody 
And so, you know, Salma's Porch is right there with 520. We're, we're like at the same level. And, um, you know, Track Stars, they've been doing it for 15 years. So they have a lot more clout. They have a lot more, you know, steady, consistent followers who have been following, including us, <laughs> including Eric and myself. But, but yeah, man, but yeah, man. So that's, that's that. It's, it's making sure that your name is everywhere and have an interview on that. It just, it's almost like a nice pilot. For sure, for sure. So one thing that you and I both do, along with several other people within this space, man, um, is on a regular basis, we're going through submissions, whether it's music or videos or whatever the case may be. And for you in particular, you are in charge of music submissions for track stars. And that also kind of ties in uh, to this page that is available in the track stars universe called leaks. Um, but let's talk about that, man. I mean, I think, you know, obviously there's artists that's looking for interviews. So the independent art spotlight is a good option for them, but everyone, even if they're not trying to, to go that route yet, everyone's trying to get their music out there. And so music submissions is a, you know, just a regular part of these artists lives. Let, let, let's talk about just your experience with, with music submissions, what you're looking for, uh, when those come in and, and just the advice that you have for artists as they are trying to, you know, make their submissions stand out from the rest. Uh, goodness. Um, one of the most important things is make sure you follow the proper protocol for music submissions on a website. I've had a ton of people who, uh, because a lot of people know that I do the music submissions for track stars. It's in my bio on Twitter and so they'll just try to like DM me and say, Hey man, I got a, a song I'd like for you to check out for track stars. I'm like, cool. Email, you know, I'll, I'm usually, you know, sometimes I'll tell you to email it sometimes every once in a great while, but I'd rather you go to trackstars.com, go to artist music submissions, send it in that way. Cause the thing that people don't realize is like people have their, 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 their email system set up. To where there's keywords that'll drop your song in a folder. So there's a music submissions folder on the Trackstars email that I check out, you know, several times a week. And if your song is not submitted the right way, it's probably not going to drop into that folder, and I'm going to miss it. Then you're going to go months and months. Your single's already out, and you're going to have these issues. And so follow the proper protocol. Now, just a really, really tiny quick plug. Uh, you can go to trackstars.com and you can actually purchase their single maximizer for $50. And they would take care of you, put all the information at Trackstars, and then they send it out everywhere for you. So you can actually bypass going to 100 different websites and doing this. So I would definitely recommend y'all do that. Um, but uh, so many other things too. The biggest things that I see is don't tell me this is the the next best song out there, because as soon as you do that, it, it sets my it sets my expectations so high that when I hear it and it's just mediocre, even if it isn't bad, if it's just mediocre, I'm going to be kind of disappointed. And uh, that and it makes me feel like this person's way too way too cocky. There's a difference in cocky and confidence. Now, saying this is one of my best songs is different from this is the best song of the summer period. Uh, artwork. I have a... Now, I'm, I'm going to cover some of the most important stuff for me personally, but there's a long laundry list of stuff. Um, artwork. When I have two, three, four hundred submissions to go through, a lot of times the artwork will let me know ahead of time. If I see a woman in a thong, that's automatic deletion. If I see a guy with a, a blunt in his mouth, excuse the terminology, the language, but you know, if I see stuff like that, I'm not even listening to it. There's no point. If there's cuss words in the, in the, the title, things like that, I, I just trash it. One of the things that I do trash is if I see a parental advisory sticker, just because one, if I'm around my family, listening to it, I don't want to have to go through it and then hear stuff pop out in my kids. You know, they hear that. But sometimes, and I've done this myself in the past, you put like a spiritual advisory, a parental advisory, you know, like Christian lyrics or like a little, some type of a version of parental advisory. I'm just going to say this. It does, it, it really does no 
It, it doesn't help in any way. Like, you're not going to draw in the non-Christian audience because the non-Christian audience is going to think, oh, they're just trying to be a knockoff Drake or J. Cole or whatever. It just looks like you're trying to imitate mainstream culture, which is kind of whack. Yeah. Well, and, um, and but let, also, me, let me piggyback off that for just a second, Jason. I know I've seen those come in. Um, and honestly, when you're looking through a ton of submissions, I, I don't have time to sit there in every instance and say, okay, what does this label actually say? You know, if it looks like a parental advisory label, I am probably just assuming that that's what it is. And I'm moving on to the next one. Exactly. Exactly. And so that's one of the things that I would recommend that you, now there's, there's times where I can, I can, I can tell the difference. And so I'll listen to it anyway. But I'm telling you, if I don't feel like going through a whole bunch of <laughs> songs like that, you might get skipped. You might get skipped. Uh, make sure uh, you, you include your socials in there because a lot of times, and, and I'm, I'm not saying you have to make Christ explicit music, but if you're making positive music and you are a Christian, somehow, somewhat, we want to know that you're a Christian because there's a lot of you know positive rappers out there who are not Christian. And, you know, we want to make sure we're supporting the, the you know, the, the kingdom fam, uh, for lack of a better term, terminology. So you don't have to say, you know, oh, I love Jesus Christ on your Twitter or on your Instagram or your Facebook. But have something up there that just, it, it gives us the confidence to know, okay, if I push this through and we play it and we put it on the Music Leaks page, the CHH Leaks page then we know we're not going to regret it later because I mean, people do go through and they listen and they're like, Oh, this artist is dope. I'm going to start following them and then find, you know, if they find out that you're, you know, talking about having, you know, intercourse with people that are not your wife and, uh, you're, you're quoting vulgar rap lyrics from other artists and you're, you know, high fiving MFers on Twitter. I've seen all sorts of stuff. And, um, so you know, and especially if you're a Christian artist, and you, you definitely need, definitely need to make sure your Twitter and Facebook and Instagram reflect that. And uh, so I, I know definitely your socials need to somewhat somehow uh, make sure your your you, people can know. You know uh, how explicit you want to be with it. That's up to you, but just just something and um, something else. Pro- I mean, there's a ton of stuff, man. Uh, don't, please don't, don't, don't send us a sob story. That's not to sound bad, not trying to sound mean, but I've heard like, there's been people like, I literally had a lady who had her daughter record a song on like a radio playing in the background with the instrumental tape in it. And it was in like the back of the room. And her daughter was like singing the music and her daughter was like, you know, recovering from cancer or something like that. And this was like her praise song to, you know, to, to, to give God thanks and you know it was her her hymn to God but like that's not radio quality stuff so uh but she put in a sob you know the kind of the, the well, I'm not gonna say a sob story she put in the story behind the song which you know it gets you emotional and you're like oh wow you know this is this is a sad story so I'll be honest I don't read the bios until after I listen to the song because I've had so many people who have sent and I'll be honest Usually, the sadder the story, the worse the song. So, and then the obvious stuff, make sure you're mixing the masterings down. Make sure you've done that. Man, there's so many things, man. Right? <laughs> there really yeah, there's a ton. There's a ton, uh, dude, for sure, man. Um, you know, I, I want to make sure we talk for just, you know, just briefly about, about leaks. You know, I think that's something that Trackstars offers that maybe not a lot of people know about or really fully understand you know what it is and i think it's got a really cool story of how it came to be um and how it relates to your music submissions so why don't you just kind of give a a quick breakdown on what leaks is okay so uh we had a soundcloud page a while ago and there was an issue where uh, we, we, we weren't getting the proper notifications about line for line because the podcast was also streamed there as well as the, the music submissions that we would get that we would post. And eventually SoundCloud, because of miscommunication, 
they completely canceled our SoundCloud page and all the songs that were on it. So Sean Grant, being the IT genius, the coder that he is, decided, you know what? We're just going to create our own page. And we're going to turn it into a podcast. So if you have podcast platforms, you can you know look up the CHH Leaks podcast and you'll get all the updated songs that get put on that list. And so SoundCloud messed us over. So Sean said, you know what? We're going to do it ourselves. And uh, so that's what it is. It's when you send your music in, if it's you know kind of quality enough, you know, if it's not complete, you know, hot garbage, then we will send you a response. You know, there's options where you can promote it above and beyond the CHH Leaks page, but the CHH Leaks is actually free. So we'll put it up there for you for free. And it's on the Trackstars website as well as the actual podcast, uh, uh, the CHH Leaks podcast. And DJ Jeremiah listens to that. And he'll go through and hear some of the songs on it. That way, if he hears something he likes, he'll plug it into the show. And uh, so that's a really good platform. I've actually had a couple of other radio DJs who have hit me up and asked, hey, can you send me the song? Can you send me the song? I want to play it on my radio show. And so there's also other radio shows out there who are picking up your song. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really cool way to get your music out there for free. Uh, I'll be honest, it takes me longer to put the song up than it takes for you to send it. So I definitely recommend sending it in. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a great way. And I, I go through, I'll go back through and listen to it uh, because there's some songs that come in that are just really, really, really good. And, uh, and I'll pick those songs, you know, and just for me personally, you know, uh, if I hear a really, really, really great song, I'll play it on Solomon's Porch Podcast. So, and, uh, and like I said, there's other DJs that listen to it. And so I, I would definitely, you know, and all of everything goes through music submissions. Uh, if you want to be on the line for line showdown, you know, you can make sure, you know, you send your music in and if you're chosen, if your song is accepted in general, you can sign up for that. So definitely head over to trackstars.com and, and submit your MP3 and make sure it's uh, make sure it's an MP3 because I don't want to have to download your song to listen to it and then go back and delete it because if I'm going through 20 songs, I don't want to del- I don't want to have to go through and download and delete 20 songs. Right, <laughs> so, right. The easier you make it for us, the more we appreciate you as a person. Definitely, definitely. Well, man, you know, kind of um, just touching. Br- back on that for just a second on the on the leak stuff um you know i think one thing that's cool is not only do you want to get your music up there if you're an artist but make sure you go and support that page you know if you're just a fan of chh you know and you want to find some new music maybe that you haven't heard or you know just just check out some really cool stuff i mean leaks is a is a uh website that you could go and get that kind of content um you know like you said, Sean and and the guys there at Track Stars, man, they're they're doing a lot of stuff to really push the culture forward, um, to really kind of give this space uh, just these areas that are its own, right? And I think Leaks is one of those. So you don't have to spend you know your day checking out SoundCloud for for new music. You can go to Leaks and get it. Um, what's the what's the URL uh, for the Leaks page so people can check it out? Okay, give me one second, and I will find that for you. And um, yeah, and I would also say too, is that whenever you're when you're going through there, I would go in there and try to find some other artists to, to link up with because I mean, there's a lot of great artists in there that you could probably get a feature from cheaper than reaching out to one of the bigger name people. And so I definitely recommend you going out there and um. And, you know, just finding those other other people you can connect with because uh, that's important. You want to build a community. And, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the basis for 520, right? Other artists connecting and collaborating, things like that. And so um, so the URL is trackstars.com uh, slash music dash submissions <laughs> uh, slash. Uh, it's not an easy URL, but uh, essentially if you go to trackstars.com, contact artist music submissions and there's also the video submissions and beat submissions if you're a if you have a music video or a uh if you're a producer and then and so and then leaks is at leaks.trackstars.com am i correct yes it should. <clears throat> sorry 
Sorry, it should be. Sorry, one more second. My bad, my bad. I should have had all these brought up so it was easy to go. Uh, Leaks.trackstars.com. That's where it's at. So, and then, and then the podcast itself, you can just look up at CHH Leaks. And uh, so you should be able to find that. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, Jay, um, if people want to be f- making sure they get the latest on what you have going on, where can they do that? Where do they need to follow you? Where do they connect with you? Uh, what What's all those details? Uh, so on Instagram and Twitter at Jason Bordo, the number one. So Jason Bordo one, but it's the number one, not the word. Uh, you can follow uh Psalmist porch podcast.com for the content there and that's I mean, that's kind of pretty much it. I, I have a facebook you can check out uh i don't do a lot of networking i would say on there facebook is more i mean you can I mean, I'll, I'll friend you on facebook it's you know just look up jason bordeaux and i got um i share some stuff up there but generally if it's like networking chh you know anything networking wise that would more interest you it's going to be instagram or twitter so and i do have business with bordeaux.com but like i said i haven't actually touched that website in so long because i'm you know doing this on the side and trying to upkeep two full websites is it's not my uh my time budget <laughs> right no doubt no doubt well jay man you know i appreciate you being on this month's podcast with us um yeah, I'm sure it's not going to be the last time, or at least I hope it's not. Um, you know, love what you guys are doing uh, on all those different uh, platforms that you're building. Uh, guys, if you didn't know, if you're looking to push your music, uh, Solomon's Porch and 520 actually have some dual packages that we are running together. You can check out 520collective.com and check, click that sponsor tab, and you get the info there. I'm sure uh, if you want to hit up uh, Jason on, you know, his social medias, or if you reach out to him via the website, he can get you information as well. We can get you taken care of on that end. Um, yeah, man, any last comments you want to hit before we, uh, jump out of here, Jay? Yeah, it's been pretty good getting interviewed. I've never been interviewed before. So this is a, this is a first for me. Oh man, dude, this is, that's like the second time we, we've got to do it with, uh, with some, some guys that we love uh so it's it's crazy man that's crazy you know uh you and um uh let's see we had josh gala on a podcast a couple episodes ago and it was his first interview as well so it's that's kind of honoring to us here at 520 man yeah it's, it's interesting when you're on the other side um i will say man uh, i love what you're doing with 520 i love seeing uh you know there's a there's a group me and seeing the folks in there connect and you know, just kind of growing together, giving feedback. Like that's the kind of thing you need. You have to have. You know, uh, you know. I know there's different collectives out there, and there's people trying to start collectives and grow collectives. I would say Five Twenty Collective is is one of those good areas that you can learn from if you want to start a collective, or just save the time and join the Five Twenty Collective. So there you go. That's what I mean. Up. I don't think there's an entry fee, right? No, no, you're yeah, yeah, no, it's uh completely free to get in, man. <laughs> so yeah, definitely join us, man. Jason's in that group me chat with us, uh, you know, providing that information uh to us all, man. I, I learned so much from you, man. I, I'm super appreciative of the friendship we have built over the last year and a half or so. Um, you know, looking to continue to grow our individual platforms and track stars uh together uh, as part of the team, man. So yeah, it's it's awesome, man. Yeah, man, it's great. <clears throat> for I'm sure. looking forward to it. For sure, for sure. Well, guys, before we get out of here, one more time, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors for this month's podcast, starting with the Bookkeeper 24 7, the official sponsor of the Industry Insider Interview. Uh, we also want to give a shout out to Show Me Christ Records in St. Louis, Missouri, and also to Just Joseph, who's uh, you know, got just a ton of material dropping this month, guys. So make sure you go and support it. The The music he's putting out is, is just, I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. That's all I know how to say. Uh, make sure you turn in next month as we, you know, bring you another great industry insider interview as, long, as well as a song breakdown. And we'll be catching you guys in August. <laughs>